You are listening to Off the Cuff. Now, here's your host, Adam Banks. Welcome, everybody, to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks. Thank you for listening to the show. Coming at you live from Lexington, Kentucky, in the Waterstone studio. And this is one of my favorite episodes every single year. This is going to be the episode where you get to hear Off the Cuff's 10 Most Fascinating People of 2018, according to Adam Banks. So I have compiled a list of 10 people that I have found fascinating for the year 2018. And I've been doing this list uh, since 2016 here on Off the Cuff. It's an episode that I do every single year. I have a lot of fun with it. It's 10 people that I choose that I feel like have been newsworthy. If you look up the word fascinating in the dictionary, it says extremely interesting. And that's what I find all of these people that is on this list. Now, I had a lot of fun doing this list this year because there were a lot of people, when I started to sit down and think about it, there were a lot of people that I found fascinating. And there was a lot of people that I had a hard time not being able to put on the list. So this list, I feel like, is a pretty solid list because it was a competitive list this year to go down and pick 10 people. Now, it's important to know that some of these people are local. Some of these people you may have never even heard of for all you out of Kentucky listeners. But you have to remember, this is off the cuffs, 10 most fascinating people of 2018, according to Yours truly, Adam Banks. So let's get right to it. Let's start off the list. Coming in at number 10 on Off the Cuff's Most Fascinating People of 2018, according to Adam Banks, is Joe McRoy from Longview, Texas. Now, right off the bat, you might not know that name, but he is an internet sensation. You might know him as Pop from the Facebook website pop watch it's a facebook page that has short videos of this guy named jason roy and his grandfather pop just riding around in his truck hanging out sitting on the porch and they're absolutely hilarious here is a video clip of a pop watch video and and in this particular video pop is coming out to his grandson's truck and his grandson jason is playing the Kiki song, which was big back in 2018, earlier this year. It was a new dance, and uh, Pop didn't appreciate it. Take a listen. Everybody wants you to do the Kiki challenge. The what? The Kiki challenge. It's uh it's a song by some singer. Everybody wants you to get out and start dancing. <laughs> the audio don't do it justice. You have to go and watch him. He's got over 2 million subscribers now to his channel. His grandson Jason it has become internet famous. He's got his own uh, public figure profile on Facebook. He's got a ton of followers. It's amazing videos that go viral. You often wonder what makes a video go viral. It could be something simple, something that you never even thought in a million years people would want to watch. And you may be just intended for a few people to see it, but if enough people get a hold of it and share it and like it and people start watching it and hearing about it, you never know what could come of it. So coming in at number nine on the list is the Kentucky football coach, Mark Stoops. He's been the head football coach for six years, and yes, you heard that correctly. I put Mark Stoops on my 10 most fascinating people, and I can't really remember if he was on 2016's list or not. I don't think he was because I was still hating on Mark Stoops, and I'm not completely sold on Mark Stoops. Just because he's on my list, like I said, it doesn't mean that I like him. He's on my list because he's been pretty fascinating this year. He's won nine games at Kentucky. Do you realize how hard that is to do at Kentucky? It's been years since that's happened. He's been, He was named the SEC Coach of the Year. Mark Stoops, he's pretty fascinating. 
He still looks lost in the sauce down there on the football field, but he got it done this year, and he's going to play in a bowl. He could win his first bowl. He plays in the Citrus Bowl this year. Who knows? Mark Stoops, you are number nine on this year's list. And number eight is college basketball player Zion Williamson that plays for Duke. He is one of the best big men for college I've ever seen, and he's just a freshman. It's amazing how athletic he is for his size. He's huge, and this guy reminds me a lot of Shaquille O'Neal, reminds me a lot of LeBron James. Without a doubt, Zion Williamson will be the number one draft pick. He won't be on my list next year because I put him on my list this year because I know how good he's going to be next year in 2019. His Duke season is going to carry over, and he's going to have an amazing season. And he could win a national championship. He could go first in the draft. I think he will. So imagine his 2019 year. But I'm going to do it early, and I'm going to put him on the 2018 list just to say I called it and I seen it first. Zion Williamson's going to have a big year. But he was introduced to us really in 2018. And people, the nation, have either fallen in love with his playing style or they're jealous of his playing style. But Zion Williamson comes in at number eight. Number seven on the list is Brett Kavanaugh. Everyone remembers Brett Kavanaugh, the Supreme Court judge candidate who was about to be appointed uh, to the Supreme Court. And then all of a sudden, Dr. Christine Ford came out and said that back years ago when Brett Kavanaugh was in high school, and she was in junior high, or high school maybe as well, that uh, he inappropriately touched her and sexually assaulted her. And it was kind of, uh, the timing was a little odd, a little fishy, a little suspicious, because it was right before he was uh, appointed to a high seat like that. But Brett Kavanaugh, he won the case. He won the case, and I find it fascinating that all this news was surrounding Brett, and he won a case in this day and age. This day and age, and right slap dab in the middle of the Me Too movement, Brett Kavanaugh walked away a free man and was appointed to the seat. Pretty amazing. Chadwick Bozeman is going to hold the number six rank. And Chadwick Boseman is an American actor, and he is now best known as playing the Black Panther. And what a movie that was. A movie that I have never seen. (laughs) But he has to be on my list because, guys, I know who Chadwick Boseman is. And, yeah, I knew who he was before Black Panther. I knew he played Jackie Robinson in that movie 42. But the role of Black Panther changed his career. And Black Panther is going to become this new franchise. And it was the first superhero movie of an African-American main character. It's huge for this culture. It's huge for uh, the times. And to be able to be the actor to play that is pretty spectacular. So Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman, he is going to be on my list. Coming in at number five is Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin. Matt Bevin stirred up a huge uproar this year in the state of Kentucky over the teacher strike. He caused a teacher strike. And I remember a teacher strike happened back when Ernie Fletcher was governor, and he ended up giving the teachers what they wanted. Matt Bevin didn't back down. Matt Bevin did nothing but make the teachers more upset. And you have to hand it to Matt Bevin for not uh, backing down. He stood true to what he truly believed what was best. But you have to look at what Matt Bevin is doing. Matt Bevin was cutting funding from higher education institutions. He was cutting wasted funds. He was cutting wasted grants. Money that could have been spent in better places, he was canceling that money from going to those people because the money could have been spent in better places. And... I listen, I went to a public university. I know how they spend money, and they survive off money, uh, off uh, public grants and things like that. But 
a lot of it's wasted. And I don't agree with everything that Bevan was doing. Uh, I don't agree with him. I, you know, I don't even think he wanted to take away the teacher pension like everybody said he was going to. Was going to. He was just revising the pension. I, I do know that he wanted to take away their vacation days and raise their health insurance, which I don't agree with. It's ridiculous that we live in the greatest country in the world and we have some of the crappiest health insurance in the world. That doesn't make sense. It will be shocking if Matt Bevan gets reelected. I will be shocked. I don't see it happening. I could actually see Matt Bevan getting defeated uh, by, uh, well, no, I think he'll win the Republican Party, as a matter of fact. But he's going to run against Rocky Atkins. Rocky Atkins is a Moorhead State guy. He graduated from Moorhead State. So I like that about Rocky. He's going to definitely put my alma mater in good light if he's the governor. Uh, so I think Moorhead State will never want for anything if Rocky is the governor. So he's definitely going to have Rowan County support and all those Moorhead uh, going people. He's going to have their support. And um, if the election was today, I'd vote Rocky Atkins. And he's a Democrat. Yes, I'm a registered Republican, but sometimes a Republican is not always the best man for the job. And Matt Bevan, I don't think – he is the, the right governor for this state. I don't think that he's a people's governor, and I don't think that what he thinks is best is best. Um, I just said you have to hand it to him for standing up for what he believed in. But Matt Bevan, he was definitely newsworthy. He called teachers thugs at one point. He made mention of them smoking cigarettes and being lazy, and they don't even have to work a full calendar year, he says. And listen, my primary job is a college professor, so I am in education. It might not be public education for K-12, through but I do understand what it's like to be a teacher and to live on a teacher's salary and to, and to really depend on the things that are good about the job. And one of the things that's really good about the job is the pension and the retirement. And that's the one thing that the teacher's system has going for it, and he wanted to mess with it. And... I tell you what, if he gets reelected, it's just a good example of how time heals all wounds and how things die down eventually. How when things seem at its highest and it's never going to go away and you're never going to get past it. If he gets reelected, that proves, that proves without a shadow of a doubt that just ride out the storm and it will get better. Coming in at number four on my list is... Comedian Kevin Hart. Now, Kevin Hart was added to my list very recently because this story is new. Kevin Hart has stepped down from hosting the Oscars in 2019. He was supposed to be the Oscar host, and everyone knows who Kevin Hart is. He's a very popular movie star and stand-up comedian. He had the opportunity to host the Academy Awards, the biggest award show in the entire world, and he decided to, instead of apologizing about insensitive tweets that he made about the gay community 10 years ago, instead of apologizing to the uh, gay community, he, um, if the Oscars told him if he didn't apologize, then he had to go. And he said, then he's leaving. He's going. He's not going to host the Oscars because he's not going to apologize. He tweets out, and this is from Kevin Hart's tweet at Kevin Hart for real, I have made the choice to step down from hosting this year's Oscars. This is because I do not want to be a distraction on a night that should be celebrated by so many amazing, talented artists. I sincerely apologize to the LGBTQ community for my insensitive words from the past. I'm sorry that I hurt people. I am evolving and want to continue to do so. My goal is to bring people together, not tear us apart. Much love and appreciation to the Academy. I hope we can meet again. And he's doing a lot of damage control. Kevin Hart is. He's out there making videos and and making and making a blog post saying that uh, he's a different person. He's evolving as a human being, and um, he says, "quote He says, guys, I'm nearly forty years old. If you don't believe that people change, grow, evolve as they get older, I don't know what to tell you. If you want to hold people in a position where they always have to justify the past, do you?" I'm the wrong guy, man. So, 
you got to understand what he's saying. We do all grow as people, and it's ridiculous that we have to be held accountable for things that we've said so long ago when we were in different places in our life. And it's because of social media it's like that. If social media didn't exist, there would be no record of a lot of the things that we have said. Actually, there would be no record unless we read it, written it down on a piece of paper. It was just gone and forgot. It was said and forgotten unless somebody got it on a camcorder. But now there's cell phones in everyone's hands. Everyone's got a cell phone. Everyone's got a Twitter and a Facebook and an Instagram, and they're always posting every single move that they make. And you have to be careful. This is a great example of how social media can ruin, ruin your career. Yes, these t- were tweets that was 10 years ago, but you have to, because of the way things are now, because of the times, just like how social media helps you, it can also hurt you. And he's just going to have to be accountable for his um, actions 10 years ago. He said he's apologized several times, so he's not doing it again. Hey, somebody had it out for Kevin Hart. It's probably a jealous comedian who wanted to host the Oscars or someone who's very, very jealous of Kevin Hart uh, because those tweets apparently surfaced from someone out of nowhere again. So someone went and was searching and digging for something. So you got to be careful. It would be scary, guys, if Off the Cuff became a famous broadcast. If it was on the radio, maybe even satellite radio, and I became a famous person. And someone had it out for me. I guarantee you could go back somewhere in my social media and find something that I said when I was twin in my early 20s that was just ludicrous and absurd. I'm sure you could find something. Because when I look back at my time hop and I see some of the things that I wrote on my Facebook, some of the statuses that I wrote 10 years ago, I cringe. I can't believe I was that stupid. And... Kevin Hart is no different. I don't like Kevin Hart. I never have been a fan of Kevin Hart. I think he tries too hard. I think he has puppets. I think a lot of the times he pulls the string and people laugh just because he pulls the string. And people want to say they like Kevin Hart because everybody else likes Kevin Hart. I don't think he's that funny. I think he tries way too hard. And people like that, it doesn't really make me laugh. My sense of humor is wired a little different. I'm more into a dry sense of humor, and Kevin Hart is not dry. And the dry sense of humor is what really cracks me up. But it's it's something how something you said 10 years ago can bring you down. And I don't think this is going to be the end of Kevin Hart's career. Actually, I think that uh, Kevin Hart will recover from this pretty well. It seems like that a lot of people are on his side and is saying that we should forgive Kevin Hart. I don't have any animosity towards Kevin Hart. I understand that it was a long time ago. And we do and we say things that happened a long time ago that we're all not proud of. And But could you imagine if we had some of the things recorded that we said back in before all this existed? There would be a ton of stuff. There would be a ton of stuff that would be leaked on people. Because the times were different back in the early 90s, the mid-90s, late 90s, even early 2000s. You could say things and get away with things. So just imagine if an audio link got out of someone saying something that back in 2001 it was appropriate to say, but in 2018 it's not appropriate to say. And in 2018, people are very, very judgmental on anyone who... uh, makes any type of discriminatory mark. But Kevin Hart comes in on the list at number four. Coming in at number three on Off the Cuff's 10 Most Fascinating People of 2018, according to Adam Banks, is Ben Shapiro, the fast-talking conservative that goes around to all these different colleges and talks about political issues. Here is a video clip of the fast-talking Ben Shapiro. You argue that racism is not a driving factor in income inequality. Because it has nothing to do with race and everything to do with culture. And when you have a culture that doesn't... And when... 
And when it, you know what? Explain to me. You explain to me why black kids aren't graduating high school. You explain that one to me. Explain to me why black kids are shooting each other in rates significantly higher than whites are shooting each other. Explain to me why 13% of the population is responsible for 50% of the murder. Explain to me why the, why the number of blacks, black kids in prison, not for innocent reasons, not for walking down the street and getting pulled into a prison, is so high. Explain, if it has nothing to do with culture, explain to me why the single motherhood rate in the black community jumped from 20% to 70% in the same course of time that the civil rights movement has made such tremendous strides. Is America more racist now than it was in 1960? And if it is, please explain to me how that happened. Ben Shapiro, there's not a lot of people out there like him. We have a large portion of our society that supports the left side. And the right side doesn't have a lot of representation until Ben Shapiro comes along. He came along and he defends the view. And view. And he is a uh, Harvard graduate. He's an attorney. He's got his own show called The Ben Shapiro Show. And it's uh, listened by millions of people. He is very intelligent. I could actually see Ben Shapiro in the future running for president of the United States. It could happen. Here is another video of Ben Shapiro debating a young college student on transgender. See fit, but if you are going to dictate to me that I'm supposed to pretend, I'm supposed to pretend that men are women and women are men, no. My answer is no. I'm not going to I'm not going to modify basic biology because it threatens your subjective sense of what you are. Okay, but you're still saying these kids should like not be accepted because they don't really fit in either place. They can't just like I'm saying that the Boy Scouts have a standard. You must be a biological boy to be a Boy Scout. You have to be a boy to be a Boy Scout. That's that in the name one. Boy Scouts. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is Ben Shapiro. He's one of a kind. If you haven't ever checked out any of these videos, check it out. Okay, we're getting closer, ladies and gentlemen, to the number one spot. We're on the bottom two. Coming in at number two on the list is Roseanne Barr. Roseanne Barr was on the top of the world. Her show was number one. Roseanne made its comeback in 2018, and she was, without a doubt the biggest star on television. And Roseanne, she uh, probably made the biggest comeback in TV history. And within a matter of seconds, she destroyed it. She tweeted out a racist tweet about former Trump employee Valerie Jarrett comparing her to Planet of the Apes. And ABC president at the time fired Roseanne and canceled her show, and then picked the show back up and rebranded it and renamed it The Connors, and took Roseanne's legacy and rebooted the show without her. Talk about a slap in the face to Roseanne. I've done this. I've done episodes on this um, on this topic. If you go back into the archives, and guys, I really recommend you go back to the archives and listen to a lot of the episodes that I've done. Just look at the title and look at the description of what I've talked about. You'll hear a lot of these stories, and I suggest that uh, there's a lot of good stuff in the archives, so I just suggest you take a look at it. But one of the episodes in the archives is Roseanne, an episode I did. I believe it's called Canceled, and it talks about this situation. But Roseanne, she went from being on top of the world, and she went to. she said that she went to bed, well, instead of me telling you, let me play the clip of Roseanne telling you what happened. Well, I was at my mom's house in Salt Lake, and, you know, I was very happy. And, you know, my show was number one after 20 years to come back and be number one. And not just be number one, but 28 million people watched it. So I was in a happy place. And uh, anyway, so I went to bed, and I woke up at 2.11 and tweeted that tweet and uh, then I went back to sleep and when I woke up in the morning it was all over the news and uh, I was like uh oh so that is what happened in a nutshell and they canceled her show and then she just disappeared so I don't know where Roseanne's at now she's made a few interviews appearances she did a special with HBO she did an interview with Sean Hannity on Fox News, 
And then she did a podcast interview with Joe Rogan and one of her Amish rabbis. And then that's really all I've heard of Roseanne. I would like to see Roseanne make a comeback. I don't think that Roseanne is a is an evil person. I don't think that Roseanne meant anything by that as as racist. I don't think she was racist in her tweet, but I think that Roseanne has a mental issue. I think that she is suffers from it and she was heavily medicated when she tweeted that out. Now that doesn't excuse her actions of doing it. You have to take responsibility of your actions, but I don't think that she should be blackballed from Hollywood. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. We are now about to reveal the number one. Producer, can I get a drum roll, please? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, off the cuffs, 10 most fascinating people. We've heard 10 through 2. So now we are here to hit number one. It is none other. The yodeling boy from Walmart. This kid, the yodeling boy, blew up all over the world by just standing in the middle of Walmart and yodeling. The guy ended up getting a record deal. And guess what? He did a Christmas album. So if you like uh, Christmas songs by a yodeler, a yodeling little boy, listen to the yodeling boy. Mason's video was released in March of 2018. He's 11 years old from Galanga, let's see, Galconda, Galconda, Illinois. Galaconda, Illinois, a very small town. He released a song called Famous in July of 2018. He performed at Coachella and uh, was seen hanging out with Justin Bieber and made an appearance on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And now he's he's still a present um, singer. He's singing country music. So he's one of these country, little boy country singers. Do you remember the singer Billy Gilman? Billy Gilman? I think it was his name, Billy Gilman. He ended up growing up and couldn't sing anymore because his voice changed. And I think that the guy even went on The Voice and tried to make it on The Voice and didn't even make it on The Voice. Talk about sad, being a famous country singer, and then all of a sudden you can't even win on a karaoke contest on television. But the yodeling boy, Mason Ramsey, is... Off the Cuff's most fascinating person of 2018, according to yours truly, Adam Banks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for listening to the show. It is always a pleasure having you listen, having you check out the show. Follow me on Twitter at AdamBanks88. Follow the show on Facebook.com slash Off the Cuff with Adam Banks. Subscribe on our YouTube channel, or you can subscribe on iTunes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Adam Banks, and I'll see you in the next episode.